I want to move on to another issue and ask both of you about this. You know, we talk about George Orwell sometimes on these programs. We talk about thought crime. And now it seems that thought crime is an actual reality in Britain, where a woman was arrested in Birmingham for standing still and saying a prayer to herself. They arrested her on the grounds of a council order that no one within 150 meters of an abortion clinic could be seen to be giving outward approval or disapproval towards the practice. Otherwise, it's a criminal offense. Now, Spot Home Fitness coming to you live. In my previous video, I highlighted the fact that this world is insane. This world is crazy. You know, this world reminds me of an episode in that old TV series called Prison Break. Hey, we need a Michael Schofield today. This is crazy. So crazy that when you pray in your mind, you can be arrested in the UK. Now, one of my friends are over there in UK. I just want to say to you, my brother, say, be in your mind and buddy. Because if you pray in your mind near a Boston clinic, you can get arrested. Before I ask you any questions about what's going on today, I have to caution you, which is just your rights, which is you do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something that you later on in court, anything you do say may be given you. Uh, what, what are you here for today? Uh, physically, I'm just standing here. Okay. Why, why here of all places? I know you, you don't live nearby. But this is an abortion centre. Okay. That's why you're standing here. Is, is you standing here part of the protest? No. I'm not are you, protesting. Are you, are you praying? I might be praying in my head. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you once more, will you voluntarily come with us now to the police station for me to ask you some questions about today and other days where there are allegations that you've broken public space of protection? Uh, if I've got a choice, then no. Okay, well then you're under arrest. I can't suspicion of failing to comply with the public spaces protection order, which is under the uh, Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act 2014. Now, of course, you again, you don't have to say anything it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something which you later on in court, anything you do say may be given. Do you understand the caution? I do. This police officer is asking this woman specifically if she's praying. And for me, first of all, that was weird because how do you just arrest someone because on the basis of praying? And then I realised that specifically in the UK, things have been put in place, they call it zoning where you are not allowed to, to protest or even have religious gathering or even pray in your mind. The privacy of your mind has been invaded. Yeah? Do you know the implications of this? So as a believer and as a Christian that must speak the truth, when you pray in your mind, you are subject to be a criminal. It's no longer criminal based on what you do. But it's now criminal based on what you think of what's happening in the comfort and the safety of your own mind. Do you want me to inform the gentleman where you're going? Which police station now? Okay. Just cause I talk about Jesus don't mean I need Jesus pieces I've been fighting against these demons like it's demon season I've been sinning without repenting, I gotta fix my life now I've been sitting all in my feelings Jesus, in Matthew 24, records or reiterates the following Where he says that in the last days, there will be many false Christs that will arise But this particular portion where he mentioned And they will deliver you up to the magistrates but do not fear what you are going to say because at that time the Holy Spirit will give you what you should speak the banning of Christianity is coming the banning of truth is coming and we need to be unapologetic of proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ Romans 1 16 becomes more real in our lives every single day I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the power of God 
unto salvation. That's what we must proclaim. That's what we must believe, irrespective if we get arrested or not. This is what we do. There's no Michael Schofield in this. But if there is a guy, I don't agree with a lot of things that he say, but this part of his sermon, I enjoyed. Let me give you some truth. No pain, no pain. Pharisees love being mainstream. And that's what's messing up the church. What's ruining the church is our uh, quest to be accepted by all. The goal of the church has never been to be accepted by all. The goal of the church is to have all to accept the church. There's a difference. We ain't supposed to become a chameleon and change our way of serv having service every 30 days so this one would like the service, that one would like the service. Let's adjust so we can get this crowd. Let's adjust so we can get that crowd. So every 30 days, your whole identity changed. That's not the call of the gospel. The gospel is what it is. The word of God is a rock. Amen. Not a sponge. We're called to be rocks. Amen. And, and the, the effectiveness of the gospel is that it doesn't change. Yeah. It's like the saying that we say. We, we, we often separate the love of God with the justice of God, with the holiness of God. You cannot deconstruct God. You can deconstruct a salad. You can deconstruct even your beliefs. But a triune God, which is one, you cannot deconstruct him. And many a times we have a saying in the church that says, God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. Yes, we do love everyone and God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. But Psalm 5 records the following, that God abhors, that God hates all the workers of iniquity. I will put that to you in a screenshot so you can see what the psalm writer writes under the guidance of God. He abhors, he hates those who commit iniquity. We cannot allow the world to come into the church to change the church to be the standards of this world. There's no way. And if you reject it, then you reject it. That's between you and God. He's got something for you if you reject it. But if you come in, don't come in thinking you're going to change it. He said, come bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. You come in with a mind to adjust to what you've come into. Don't come in thinking that you're going to change what you've come in. When people preach like this, they are being labeled as fanatics. They are being labeled. But I think... But this bishop is preaching and he accounts to what the Bible says in Galatians. Galatians, if I were to please people, I will not be able to be called a servant of God. This can never be secured until men's hearts are changed. People's hearts need to be changed. Every time something happens now, the first thing we say is we need to pass another law. We need to pass a law. They ought to pass a law. But some things you can't legislate. Jesus himself said the following words, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And then Jesus Christ brings a separation between father and son-in-law and mother and daughter-in-law. And what happens here is that because of the sake of the gospel, we will be hated. For the sake of the gospel, we will possibly be beheaded. For the sake of the gospel, we will probably have to lose our lives. For he that wants to gain his life shall lose it, but he that is willing to give up his life shall gain it. For what does it matter if one prospers and his soul is perishing? We need the truth like this. My God's go field. Color doesn't factor in. Party doesn't factor in. Gender doesn't factor in. I want to know, what are you for? And if what you are for lines up with what I believe, you got my support. If it doesn't, you're out. And then I have a few litmus tests. I don't vote for baby killers. Right. 
I don't vote for anybody who is for same-sex marriage. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wickedness. It's wickedness. And so they want to keep, keep us where we're not thinking. And uh, some, some of the greatest prayer warriors I know of who love to pray and call on the name of the Lord vote for people whose policies, policy positions are the opposite or antithetical to their prayers. I mean, you get off your knees, you've been praying for an hour, speaking in all kinds of tongues. Hurt my shot, glory to God, and all that. Then get up and go vote for somebody. After all that, after all that, whose position is just the opposite of what you've been praying. Folk like that give prayer a bad name. Everybody's talking about uh, Jamal Bryant uh, and um, his saying that uh, New Birth should take some of its vast land and use it to grow among all crops, grow cannabis, <clears throat> marijuana. Uh, <laughs> you know. Now I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell you something I'm holding out for. I'm holding out for this, and maybe it's just wish for thinking on my part. I'm holding out for this to be revealed as a joke. I'm thinking, Brother Joshua, no preacher could be serious. No, no preacher could suggest such. And with all due respect to my brothers and sisters of the lighter hue, no black preacher would suggest that his church use this land not, not, not to plant corn. You know, okra, green beans, collard greens. I'm, I'm hoping that that is what this is. Because if it is not, then I believe what we're witnessing is what happens to a man when God turns that man over to himself. The worst thing that God can do to you or me is to turn us over to ourselves. For that means the Holy Spirit will no longer tug at your heart. The Holy Spirit will no longer bring any conviction. You won't see what's wrong with what you're saying. And that means you, you've been dedicated to destruction. Let me make it plainer. It means you're going to hell. Because the only way we repent is because the Spirit of God convicts us. Amen. You got saved and I got saved because the Holy Spirit tugged at our heart. We respond to the tugging of the Holy Spirit at our heart. The Bible teaches that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. If it is not a joke, if he's serious, he's depraved. But that's wicked. That's wickedness. Marijuana is not good. It's, it's not a harmless drug. The numbers show that it's not good. Depressions are up. It's ruining college, high school students. Messing up their minds, messing up their development. Uh, depression is up. Suicides are up. All kinds of problems. It's a gateway drug into other drugs, but if it don't lead you into other drugs, that drug in and of itself is bad. Robs you of all of your energy. All you want to do is get high. Sit around all day. Paul and Silas find themselves in a prison. Sometimes people are in a prison and they appeal to the influence. They appeal to their strength. They appeal to the number or the gang that they are affiliated to. They appeal to their aggression. But here Paul and Silas is thrown into the prison and they started to praise the Lord. You can only 
and get out of this prison shaped world if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ that is found in the 66 books of the Bible not the Jesus of Islam not the Jesus of Buddhism not the Jesus even of Roman Catholicism not the Jesus of Mormonism but the true Lord Jesus Christ based upon God God's Word who is the Word himself I'm here to tell you this world is gonna become more like a prison but be like Paul and Silas and praise the true living God this is Pat Bone Fitness signing out to you no pain no pain we don't need Michael Schofield we really enjoyed Rev this Rev wants you to leave thanking if you leave thinking, whether you agree with me or not, if you leave thinking, I've done part of my job. Now, you ought to agree with me because I'm right. But in case you can't, at least I made you think. If you think hard enough, you will come around.